Al-Fatihah And also before we begin, inshallah, let's all raise up our hands five times. Amma yujib al for Haji Hussain Rashid, inshallah, who is at the hospital. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amma yujib al Mustarraiza. Verse and other verses of nikah, 
There are so many factors within those verses that Allah wa Taala and Rasulullah highlighted as factors when we put in place, it will strengthen our relationship. So let us look at two or three of them tonight, inshallah. The first one is ashukuru wa takdir. You are in marriage with your family, with your wife or with your husband. There is this important factor. If it is found in your marriage, inshallah, that marriage will be the best marriage. You know, sometimes people, they are in marriage, but they are not happy. When they all reach in the house, this one sits in that corner, and the other one sits in that corner. No one is talking to the other. We have got marriages like that. They cannot tell one another, go out. They just stay for staying sick. There is nothing there. And of course, you've got a relationship where there are so many animosities in those relationships. We've got a relationship that people went out and they are separated. So the first factor, which is very, very important, is the factor of being grateful to your partner. Being grateful to your wife, and you as a husband, you are also your wife being grateful to you. Hardly we find sometimes we are grateful to our wives, and vice versa. Many a times we don't become grateful to our wives, and they don't become grateful to us. But Islam is telling us if there is one important factor that will help a marriage to become a good marriage is when husband one day or now and then in that marriage realize that this lady, she is sacrificing her life for me and my children. This lady is going through so much pain for me and my children. Why can't I be grateful to her? The same thing a lady when she realized that this husband is sacrificing every day and night going out to fend for us, why can't I be grateful to him? Therefore you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in Quran said, Wallahu gafurun shakur. You look at chapter Shura, verse 23. It said Allah is gafur and Allah is shakur. This is Sigatul Mubalaga in Arabic. When it comes to Mubalaga, it means Allah is forever the fool. Yani forever, every single minute, and every single moment, Allah is forgiving people their sins. And the second one is Shakur. Allah is forever grateful to who? To his servant. When you do small things, Allah is grateful to you. And how does Allah become grateful to us? You know, when you make salah, the benefit is for you. But Allah is grateful for that salah. When you recite a dua, the benefit is for you. But Allah is grateful for that dua. When you go for hajj or you do something good, charity, Allah is grateful. How does Allah become grateful? Allah becomes grateful, number one, by increasing your wealth. Number two, Allah becomes grateful by forgiving you your shortcomings. Number three, Allah becomes grateful by accepting your dua. You find something you want and you are asking Allah, mentioning that thing. The next day you go, you find it. Allah is grateful to you. And the greatest gratefulness of Allah is when we go on the day of Qiyamah, you will put each and every one of us in Jannah al So if Allah in Quran said, I am a ghafoor, and I am Shakur, I am grateful to you. Why can't we be grateful to one another? When Rasulullah said, Man lam yashkur al mahlouq, lam yashkur al fahid. Whoever is ungrateful to the creatures of Allah, he or she will never be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thankfulness or gratefulness begin with that woman you stay together under one shade. It begins with that husband you stay together under one shade. Isn't it Allah and Quran said, Al Jazaul Ihsan al Ihsan? Isn't that the reward of goodness is goodness? Isn't that the reward of kindness is kindness? So when your wife, she's kind to you, why can't you in return also show kindness to her, even twice or double what she should to you? Isn't it that if your husband show kindness to you, why can't you show more than that? And look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully when he comes down to our level. 
to the level of the creatures. After finishing that, he's also grateful. He begins with our fathers and our mothers. And you know, very famous common verse. You have to be grateful to your parents. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, Allah goes down to the level. You people in marriage, be grateful to one another. And Imam Mujahid al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Imam Mujahid alayhi salatu wa salam said, Ushkur man an'ama alayk. Be grateful to the one who has done good to you. Be grateful to that person who has done good to you. Be grateful and be liar like between you and Allah. Is there anyone who has done kindness better than your wife and your husband? There is nobody you can point to say, this person is so good to me. And that cannot be compared to the goodness of the wife and to the goodness of the husband. Therefore, Islam encourages us as men and as women. But unfortunately today you find some of us men, instead of us being grateful to our wives, what we do? Sometimes when we attack them, we attack their appearance also. Well, now we've seen situations where people, when they attack their wife, they attack the parents who are buried at some point. Some, when they get angry, they lose it completely. They will attack and say, this is how your father was, when the father is already buried. Therefore, Rasulullah comes out and says, Do not insult any dead person. Because if you insult any dead person, you will be insulted alive and after your death. So therefore, we need to be grateful to them. Look at Rasulullah. One day, you know, Ali Matus Aliya, she was the nursing mother of Rasulullah. One day, Rasulullah went and bought 40 ships. 40. And then he brought it to Ali Matus Aliya. They asked Rasulullah, why are you giving all these things to Ali Matus Aliya? He said, I cannot be ungrateful to Allah and to this lady. This lady was my nursing mother. So this 40 is to show gratefulness and tactfulness to Khadija. Therefore, even Islam stands forward and said, not only be grateful to your wife and your husband, their parents, your in-laws, you have to be grateful to them. Someone who gave birth to your wife and he looked after the wife, and then he gave you for marriage. You have to be grateful to that person according to Islam. And the same thing as a lady, you have to be grateful to the parents of the husband. Therefore, you find our beloved Rasul, even after the death of Bibi Khadija, alayha, Rasulullah would never stop talking about the goodness of Khadija and asking Allah to grant Adiza a lot of mercy and rahmah. First, Allah is teaching us. This is a very good wife. And she was so kind to me. Rasulullah would say, This was Adija is a lady. When no one was ready to support me, she supported me. Khadija is a lady. When no one was ready to give me small amount of money, she gave me all her wealth. Khadija is a lady. When no one was ready among women to believe in my message, she believed in my message. Oh Allah, increase your mercy and illuminate the grave of Khadija. Gratefulness, brothers. Simple factors. You see now, oh my wife, thank you so much. It goes a long way. The same thing Mulai Kainat. In the life of baby Fatima, he would look at her face and say, Thank you, Fatima to Zahra. Thank you, Bint Rasulullah. Even after the death of Fatima to Zahra, Amir al muminin would sit at one corner. He said, this is a lady who served me until the, the, the complexion of her skin changed. This is a lady who cooked food for me and my children through all difficulties until when you would sit next to her, you will smell the food from her clothes. This is a lady who went in her own way to serve me in the house until bruises appeared on her hands. Oh Allah, bless the daughter of Rasulullah. Gratefulness Albert teach us. But today you find hardly we thank our wives. Hardly we thank our husbands. Hardly we thank them. And so this is number one factor that will always make the marriage new, I'm telling you. Because you know, appreciation and recognition, it goes a lot more. 
Once I recognize you as my husband, and I recognize you as my wife, Wallah, it goes a long way. Not when we don't recognize one another. We are in quick, quick in judging one another. We have a short temper. Small thing, we jump from one place to another. All those things, look at Bakara verse 237. Allah talking about inheritance, but at the end Allah says, Do not forget the goodness between you and your wife. The same Allah is Allah talking about talaq. He said, yes, you guys want to do talaq, but wala tansa wal fadla baynikum. Don't forget the goodness between you and them. You may want to divorce, but there was something good that happened between you and them. So don't forget that goodness. So gratefulness, brothers, is very, very important in Islam. Once we learn to talk, somebody ask, how do we thank them? When she do food, do I have to thank her? When she do this, you have to, no, 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 no. There are ways of thanking. It's not like every day you cook food. No, no, no. Appreciate the person if it is once a month, once a week. Show the person kawlan wa fa'ilan with your word and with your actions. Show it. Therefore, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in Quran and said, This is the nature of an insan. Insan, when he is in trouble, he is in difficulties, he will call us and will cry looking for our help. When he's afflicted with problems, he will call us, he will cry, Ya Allah, or he'll come to the husband, to the wife, you know, I'm sorry, this, 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 this. But Allah says, But when that problem is attended to his soul, it will be as if he was not the one who was asking for help. So the same thing applies to us. So number one, brothers and sisters, let us learn to be grateful to one another. That's number one. Number two, you have to provide your wives and your children a balanced life. What is balanced life? Balanced life is a factor that will make the marriage everyday new. You know, Allah mentioned in the Quran, There are those when they make infar, huh? They provide to their family, they provide to their children, they are not extravagant. And they don't do it also below. You know, when you are extravagant in provide in provision, you will lose it one day. And if you are below, you will lose it one day. So Allah said one of the factors which will help the marriage be balanced. Not that extravagant and not also below. Make it balanced. Because if I am extravagant to my wife, to my husband, to my children, the day that I don't have, it will cause a big mess. And we've seen that in many situations. And if still, if I'm below, 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 I don't want to take out. I don't want to look after my wife. I don't want to look after my children. Definitely that one also, the day it backfire, it will backfire to such an extent that it cannot be amended easily. So therefore, the second point is that be balanced in the way you spend. Be balanced in the way you do. Even you look at our deen, it's all about balance. You don't become extravagant and you don't also below. You can become between in Namal Amaru, Bainal Amare. You do it in between. What is this extravagance and being below? You know, today some people they are in marriage. Every decision they take in their marriage, their parents take for them. Even to take a car to that place. He doesn't have the time to ask the wife, he has to ask the father and the mother, can I take care of them? Every decision in that marriage, it is the parents who are taking the decision. The wife, she doesn't have role to play. That is too much. That is too much. You sought their consent, but still also sought the consent of the wife. The same thing applies to the wife. Sometimes you will marry a woman and she will ask you not to visit your parents completely. So therefore, a balanced life, you don't become too much, you don't become low. Give them balanced life and then it will help a lot. Number three, Al-Wafa bil ahd. Fulfill promises you promise one another. You are in marriage. So many promises go between you and your wife. You have to fulfill them. You don't fulfill them, the trust is getting lost day by day. So therefore, Islam said, Aslu deen ada ul amana wal wafa bil ahad. 
The root of religion is to give a manna back to the one it belongs to and also what you have promised some people, give it back. And the best thing is between you and your wife. Of course, the children we know. If you promise a child tomorrow you don't give him, you make him a liar. He will also continue to lie because you will say it's true. But with husband and wife, you promise, you don't fulfill, I will take you hard this year. I will take you hard next year. I will take you for Ziara this year. I will take you next year. And she see money coming, money going out. Nobody cares. You are going, you are enjoying. Then that trust will be lost completely. And the last one, which is also very, very important. Adabun Nasiha. You have to advise one another. Continue to advise one another in your marriage. Whenever you see a husband going this way, advise him. Whenever you see a wife going this way, advise her. A Rasul said three times, Ad-Dinun Nasiha, Ad-Dinun Nasiha, Ad-Dinun Nasiha. Religion is Nasiha. Religion is Nasiha. Religion three times. So therefore, one fourth factor which is very, very important, let's advise one another. As Islam said, woman is mirror to another woman. You are more mirror to your wife and to your husband than any other person. Let the husband see himself in you and you see yourself in the husband. Advise one another. If the person is doing wrong, don't sit and fold your arms and not advise him. Once you will continue to do that, inshallah, you will have a good life. You will not have a problem. When problem comes, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will help you to overcome that problem. Therefore, the best we quoted, Allah made it very clear, and we all know it is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So since it's the sign of Allah, we have to strive as much as we can to protect it. We have to strive. Don't make your marital relationship old relationship. Always make it new. And how do you make it new? Through your efforts. Once you give that effort, inshallah, you will see Allah will bless you and the marriage will become a very good marriage and there will be a lot of barakat and khairat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Ibn Rasulillah. السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن هذا سيد الوصيين كل عين باقية يوم القيامة إلا عين هذا بقات للوصاغة cry as we know on the day of Qiyamah, except the eye that cried for Aba Abdullah Hussain Salawatullahi wa salamahu ala. Talking about marriage, we remember our beloved mother Fatima to Zahra Salawatullahi wa salamahu alayha. So that it will serve as a blessing and means of comfort for the brother and sister who got engaged and all those brothers and sisters who are married inshallah. We all know what happened to our beloved mother Fatima to Zahra salawatullahi wa salamahu alayha. The only surviving child and daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We are told in the narrations the authority of the time sent the henchmen to the house of Fatima to Zahra. When they arrived at the house of Fatima to Zahra, they remained behind the door of Fatima to Zahra. They shouted and called out uh, at the house of the daughter of Rasulullah. Open the door. She said, no, this is the house of the daughter of Rasulullah. Their reply was, and so what if it is the house of the daughter of Rasulullah? As we all know, Narishin taught us, uh, these henchmen pushed the door on Fatima to Zahra. When they push the door on Fatima to Zahra, the most helpful part of pushing the door on Fatima to Zahra was the nail on the door that went and pierced. That pierced the body of Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayha. And this nail in piercing, we all know it happened during the time of Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam.
<laughs> when this lady went to the market to burn her home here, this lady fell down. When she fell down, she said, May the guest of Allah be on the killer of Fatima Zahra. <laughs> now they arrested the lady. They came to Imam Jafar Sadiq for dua for the lady to be released. <laughs> when the lady was released, they brought her to Imam Jafar Sadiq. <laughs> Imam asked her, Why did you guess the killer of Fatima Zahra when you fell down? She said, oh, my imam, I fell on my rib. When I fell on my rib, I then get the kill of Fatima. That was the moment I understood the pain that Fatima to Zahra went through. Therefore, Narayshi taught us when Amir al muminin was busy making the ghusl of Fatima to Zahra. Amir al muminin and went and touched the broken rib of Fatima to Zahra. Imam Amir al muminin screamed. He screamed and cried. Asma bin Tuma said, Why are you crying? You are the one who lifted the door of Ghaibar. He said, Oh, Asma, as I was busy making the ghusl of my beloved wife, my hand went and touched the broken rib of Fatima. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Wa si'alamu alladheena dhalamu ayyamun kalabin yamkalibun. Well, I'll keep it to the Muttaqeen. Let us see that our hands are weak to Inshallah. With the barakat of this majlis, Haji Hussain al-Rashid, may Allah make it easy for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is your slave, he is your servant. He's going through a lot of difficulties, he's going through a lot of pain. Allah, you know him better than us. We ask you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to grant him your mercy and shafa'a, insha'Allah. May Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if his kiyo is in Jannah, may Allah bring the kiyo to him, insha'Allah. If his kiyo is in the sea, may Allah bring the kiyo from the sea, insha'Allah. If the kiyo is far away from him, we ask Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, to bring the kiyo close to him, insha'Allah. May Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it easy for him wherever he is, insha'Allah. All our brothers, sisters, fathers, or family members who are not feeling well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shafa, insha'Allah. Yeah. Also the marhumin of Haji Ibrahim Jafar and his family, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannat al-Firdaus. Yeah. And all of us, our marhumin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannat al-Firdaus. Yeah. And the brother and the sister, insha'Allah, Muhammad and Tanweer, who are engaged, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them the way they witness the day of their engagement. May Allah make it easy for them to witness the day of their permanent marriage, insha'Allah. Wa